All right, so let's get into heading into Charlotte. We're going to give our power rankings heading into Charlotte and then our NASCAR fantasy and there are picks. So power rankings heading to Charlotte. Mine didn't really change a whole lot, uh, I, but I did switch the top because I'm giving – kudos to kyle larson going there no practice didn't even hop in the freaking cup car at all that weekend and just and you don't just do that at in the cup series of the the highest tier racing in the world and just get fourth that doesn't happen you'll start last with no practice nothing just get fourth he's my number one right now i've got denny hamlin back to second those two are neck and neck right now i've got brad up the third chase at fourth and i put chris busher up into my top five now and he ran so well at the All-Star race. I, I think he'll race really well at Charlotte. His, He and Brad are starting to get something clicking, and the Fords seem to be getting some speed now that they found. Yeah. Well, our top five is almost identical. I, I kept Hamlin at, at one and Larson two. And like you said, what Larson did was impressive, jumping from going, you know, 232 miles an hour in, you know, 1,600-pound car, you know, an hour and a half later, he's in the heavy stock car with no horsepower and, and being able to do that without even missing a beat that that's pretty impressive uh, i do have brad keselowski at three i moved joey logano in at four like i said fords have been going pretty good and that was just so dominating yeah, i had to put him in there and i left chris busher at five he's he's right there going to get a win here soon i, I think i think whoever would have started on the pole though would have won that race i don't i don't think anybody I don't think he was going to pass if you got clean air. Ty Gibbs surprisingly fell off pretty hard in that race. That was that was actually a surprise. But other than that, nothing. No one likes that. No one really passed. Um, all right. So our fantasy lineups this week. Finally getting back to it because it was a much needed break that everybody needed. Uh, so our my starters this week for the Coca Cola Six Hundred. I've got Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney. Chase Briscoe, Josh Berry, Joey Logano, and in my garage, I got Brad Keselowski. And the featured matchups they have this week, they have Kyle Larson versus William Byron. That's a pretty tough one, but I'm going to give William Byron because I don't want to jinx anything this weekend. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Johnson versus Stenhouse. I did This threw me off really bad, but I put Ricky Stenhouse in there because Jimmy has – I think my truck goes faster than his car lately. Uh, Kyle Busch versus Ryan Blaney. Kyle Busch has been struggling major big time this year. I I've got Ryan Blaney. He actually ran really well at the All-Star race. And Joey Logano versus Tyler Reddick. I'm going to edge out Joey Logano. He's in my lineup, and he's got the momentum right now. Momentum is a legitimate thing that carries on in NASCAR. And go ahead with yours, and then we'll talk about the good bets that they have. All right. So my starters, I have Martin Truex Jr., Chase Elliott, Ty Gibbs, Ryan Blaney, Chris Busher, and in my garage, I have Noah Gregson. You just went all in on this one. I, you know, I got a lot of ground to make up. So in my matchups, I have also have William Byron over Kyle Larson, uh, Rocky Stenhouse over Jimmy Johnson. Hell yeah. <laughs> Blaney over Kyle Busch, but I picked uh, Reddick over Joey Logano. That one's the, probably the toughest. Uh, Byron that, and Larson. Yeah, Byron and Larson, I, you know. So the good the good bet they have this week, they say Kyle Busch. I don't agree with it because they're going to based on the history that he's had. He has not had a good year though. The car has just not been fast. They've not found the speed. But the Coke Six Hundred ends up being a strategic uh, ending because Austin Dillon's won the Coke Six Hundred before. So <laughs> that's not a sh shot at Austin Dillon per se, but it was a shot to Austin Dillon. Um, good bets, Tyler Reddick. I, I think lots. I think Toyotas are fast on the mile and a half, anyways. It says to avoid Bubba Wallace, but I think if Reddick has a good race, I think Bubba will have a decent race, I, I too. I agree with that. It says avoid Ross Chastain. I, I actually agree with that. They just haven't been fast these last few weeks. I don't know what's no. been going on with uh, with Trackhouse, but it's kind of surprising they've been off the pace. And they did say a sleeper is none other than the new lightweight boxer, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Rocky Stenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I, I I could see that I think you could definitely see somebody that you would not expect in this race to be contending at the end because a lot it, is of times it does happen on those long races where yep. you know strategy plays a big factor and it, it depends if people want to take right side tires and 
if they want to try to make it on fuel, if it's a fuel mileage race, that that plays a big factor. Again, Junior should have won that race. Uh, or was the other Charlotte race? Should have won one of the Charlotte races. Know, he, he needed he, a drop. He needed that much fuel. If that. <laughs> Yeah, so that it, anything can happen. We've seen that at the Coke 600. You can lead a lap 500, and you can be wrecked out by lap 600. So it's it's a big deal. And last two years ago was the longest Coke 600 that they had. It was like five and a half hours. It was something insane. That's the one that Larson caught on fire, and uh, that's the infamous one there. Uh, all right, that does it for NASCAR fantasy. So the the Coke 600. One of the biggest crown jewels in NASCAR, and I think these cars will put on a really, really good show. I'm interested to see how they put on a 600-mile race with this car. I think it'll be really racy, and the it, weather's pretty good. The all first the, uh, three or 400 miles are probably going to be pretty calm. People are just going to try to get through halfway. I, you, you, would, you would think so, but... If Stenhouse and Kyle Busch come in contact with each other, there might be some bad blood happening uh, there. So I, who knows? Uh, I think the track could be hot. Is going to be hot and slick to start off with. It's going to be almost ninety all week this week, and you've got all three, four. You got four series racing on the track this weekend. You're going to likely, unless it rains a lot, it's going to be rubbered up very well. There should be multiple grooves. I'm excited for this one. I think it will put on really good races. The Xfinity and the trucks, the Xfinity, the race in the afternoon on Saturday, and that is generally a pretty good race, too, because those cars are sliding around the entire yeah. race. And the truck series is actually a decent race, too. Charlotte just puts on pretty decent races lately in the last couple of years. It was a long time ago, really, really snoozer. Somebody who would get out to like a 20-second lead and just stink up the field. Yeah. You're not going to see that with this car, and I don't think you'll see it with this any car's of the Xfinity This car's been good for the mile and a half. You know, yeah. they, they, as, bad as, they, out as, as bad as they half, are... Yeah, as bad as they are on the short track, the mile and a half is definitely amazing. Exact polar opposite of what it is. So, right before the picks, any strategy that you can think of that'll probably be uh, playing a big factor into the six hundred. Uh, the biggest thing you just you know you got to make it make it four hundred miles. You got to be be in it to win it. So you you know four hundred laps. It, it, or yeah, four hundred laps. In, in my mind you're probably not going to take any unnecessary risks early get you know get to halfway then start racing but like you said you, shit, you never know uh, weather should be okay so i don't think they're going to be racing to the halfway the way more you know now the thing is you know cars that are good early in the sun may not be so good when the sun goes down and you know, might see the guy struggling all of a sudden you know those lights kick on and uh, you see them coming to the front so it's yep and in my mind, you, you want to be good for the later runs. Oh, 100 percent. You so the car's such, definitely, it, definitely going definitely going to change. You're going to have to build to be good. You're going to have a lot of adjustability that you can change just by track bars and wedge. And this is the only race of the season that has four stages in it. So that's how big it is. I think it's 100, 100, maybe or something, something like that. It should be 100, 100, 100, 100. But I doubt it is because that makes sense. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a live entertainment platform rethinking ticketing by caring more about their fans, teams, and venues. They are powering a new open entertainment industries where fans have effortless access to experiences in teams, venues, and shows and have seamless access to their audiences. With trusted consumer marketplace and innovative enterprise ticketing technology, SeatGeek has what you need for any sporting event. Make sure you use my promo code ZBMedia to get $20 off your purchase from SeatGeek. That is Z-B-M-E-D-I-A from SeatGeek, $20 off. You can't beat that. Check them out now. Get your next concert, sporting event, or anything else from SeatGeek. Back to the show. All right, so let's give our picks. The trucks, Xfinity Cup, ARCA. Uh, shout out to Caleb Costner. He's actually revealing, as we're talking right now, a new paint scheme for this weekend and a new sponsorship as well. So good luck to him in the ARCA Series race uh, this Friday night. 
uh, truck series. Who are you going with? I, I, I'm going with your pick from last week. I got Christian Eckes. I've got the guy that won at Las Vegas, and I think he can get a second career win. I've got Raja Carruth. Okay. Xfinity on Saturday afternoon. So I, I, I keep picking this guy. One of these times he's going to let me get it for me. He's looking, still looking for his first career win. Joe Gibbs car. I got Sheldon Creed. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's my exact uh, thoughts too. I've got Sheldon Creed as well. Okay. And he's he actually I think he ran second there last year if I'm not mistaken to uh, might have been Allgaier. So yeah, uh, he goes yeah, well. Look here. for the junior cars to be fast at Charlotte. They definitely they always are. They yeah. are very good there. Especially Justin, he's really got it figured out around Charlotte. All right, Cup Series. Who takes this crown jewel home? Defending winners Ryan Blaney. So for this one, I got. You know, love to pick Larson. Not going to jinx him. Uh, I got William Byron for this one. Hard hard to beat Hendricks right across the street from Charlotte Motor Speedway. And Mom's sticking with the Hendrick Cam. She's got Chase Elliott. Well, I'm doubling up on the Hendrick Camp, and I'm agreeing with Mom. I've got Chase Elliott, and she got her pick last week right. So it should yeah. be. If anybody's betting, figure out what she's doing in fantasy and then just go with that. Right. <laughs> All right, that does it for the NASCAR roundup and preview for this week. 